Welcome to the first episode of Taurific Tautober. This is very excited for a new Tau Codex and a little apprehensive too because they could also get hit with the nerf hammer. But we're going to start off this month with the KV-128 Storm Surge. So this is the official White Dwarf, not a leak, but this is my White Dwarf I picked up today. And so we're going to be going over the, the KV-128 Storm Surge and my thoughts on it. So let's start with the stats. It is a gargantuan creature. Weapon skill 2, ballistic skill 3. Um, strength 6, toughness 6. Only toughness 6. That's kind of strange. It's got 8 wounds. Initiative 2 to attack. If it's ever in close combat, it's it, you've already lost the game. Leadership 9 with a 3 plus save. Um, so that's some really good stats. The base cost is 360 and you can have up to 3 in a unit. Which is a lot of points, but... It comes with a Pulse Blast Cannon, Twin Link Smart Missile System, Cluster Rocket System, four Destroyer Missiles, and Twin Link Flamer. So let's go over the weapons. Its main weapon is the Pulse Blast Cannon, which has a 30 inch range and different effects depending on how far it is. So the first one is up to 10 inches, gives a Heavy 2 Strength D AP one shot. Um, 10 to th 20 inches, Strength 10 AP 3 Heavy 2 Blast. And, strength, and 20 to 30 inches, strength 9, EP5, heavy 2, large blast. Overall, this weapon is horrible. This pulse blast cannon is, is absolutely ridiculously um, underpowered. The ranges, especially for something that's designed not to move, which we'll go over here in a little bit. Um, having a 30 inch range on something that's designed not to move is, is stupid. And while this D may be tantalizing at 10 inches, again, if something is 10 inches away from you, you've already lost with the towel. So that's really horrible. These ranges basically need to be tripled. So up to 30 inches, strength D, 20 to 30, or 20 to 40, the heavy two, and then 40 to 60. And if those were the ranges, then it would be a much better useful weapon. The cluster rocket system, range 48 inches, strength five, AP five, heavy 46. Again, very underwhelming, especially with the price inputs of these things. Um, so being heavy 46 means you're rolling every time you want to shoot. Average will be 14 shots, which may sound awesome, but a broadside puts out eight twin link shots. And they're better. Um, so I figured it out, you know, you figure it 14 shots on average, seven will hit at BS3. Say against toughness four, four of them will wound, so you might kill a space marine. So this entire marine's missile cluster, these big giant missile pods on the side will kill one marine. One, one marine, on average. Um, so again, a very underwhelming weapon. Destroyer missiles, um, these are 16 range strength, eight AP one, heavy one, one use only, so they're up powered, or specifically um, lower AP uh, seeker missiles. I assume that they're probably going to have the Seeker rule in the new Codex, but for now they're just regular missiles. But again, um, even though it's technically, you know, clear, not perfectly clear on the rules, but gargantuan creatures can only fire two weapons a turn. So the fact that it's got this gun and the missiles, and you got these destroyer missiles, and he's also got the smart missiles, and the Twin Link Flamer, and it can't overwatch, which was what would be really cool with that Twin Link Flamer. Um, being a gargantuan creature, it can't overwatch. It can only fire two of those guns a turn. Or two missiles a turn, and that's it. I mean, two FPS three. Um, let's see, let's start with the options. Uh, may include two additional storm surges, so you can have up to three in a unit. And we change, exchanges twin link flamer for a twin link burst cannon for five points. Twin link air bursting fragmentation projector, which is not too bad. But again, you can fire two weapons. We're getting five points. Or we can even exchange this Pulse Blast Cannon for a Pulse Driver Cannon for 15 points. And the Pulse Driver Cannon is a bit better. It is 72 inch range, strength 10, AP2, Ordnance 1, Large Blast. So it's essentially a 72 inch range Vindicator for 375 points. And while a 72 inch range Vindicator might sound like fun, not for that price. And it's one special rule is to stabilize an anchors in your shooting phase. In addition to firing normally, a storm surge may begin deploying its anchors. From then on, the storm surge cannot move and cannot stomp. In the shooting phase of the next turn, and each subsequent shooting phase, a storm surge with its anchors deployed can fire twice. 
Make a second Sushini attack directly after the first has been resolved. The storm surge can retract its anchor. So I mean, we can fire four weapons, I would imagine. Um, the storm surge can retract its anchors at the beginning of any movement phase, and it can move, shoot, and make the swamp attacks normally. So this again is because of this stabilizing anchor rule is designed to sit in the back and shoot. And with its guns just being so woefully underwhelming, um, and its survivability to be at toughness six being only okay. Oh, and it can take three items from the support systems list. So right now, at least with the current codex, it can take a shield generator. Um, it can take an early warning override, so it can get interceptor. And but by the time you add in the useful gun, the pulse driver cannon, the shield generator, and the early warning overdrive override, now you're up over 400 points. And and um, so, is it really worth 400 points of shooting? I know. I think it's better on, with interceptor. Intercepting something that's going to come, especially like a drop pod, has come close. Drop that 10-inch AP2 blast or that large blast, strength 10 AP2 large blast, on something that's drop potted right in front of you, like say grab centurions. Um, now you're talking about something that's actually going to be useful. Um, you could actually give it, you have three, so you could give it a, a Skyfire, you can give it um, Shield Generator, and you can give it Interceptor. So using, having these missiles on Skyfire and Interceptor, now you're talking something that's useful. So this, so this is actually more useful in your opponent's movement phase than it will ever be in your own shooting phase. And that's kind of disappointing. But still, by the time taking those three upgrades to this, the shield generator, so it has a four-up uh, involve save, being a gargantuan creature, it already has, feel no pain. And then you add in Interceptor and Skyfire, and wow, now this suddenly becomes an incredibly useful fire platform. And anyone who plays drop pods especially if they're wanting to try and get their Graf Centurions close enough to hit this thing, because, you know, that's, Graf Centurions are pretty much its only real threat of shooting is Grav Weaponry. Um, but Grav Weapons are also pretty darn prevalent, too, so. Um, and even, even, even a D weapon will only do so much to it. Um... So yeah, that's where we're at. So, and then, you know, like I said, that's what, 405, 415 points, something like that, by the time you get done with all those upgrades. And if I took all those upgrades, then I would consider playing a Storm Surge. Because I think being able to intercept with a Strength 10 AP2 pipe plate is going to be a really, really big deal. And that's any, basically anywhere on the table, you're going to be able to do that with a 72 inch range. So anything that even that comes from, from behind your opponent's, on your opponent's deployment edge, is still going to get uh, threatened by this. And it can fire both its two weapons on intercept. So you can do two missiles, you can do the big gun and the cluster missiles, or you can do even the smart missile system. Or whatever. You can fire any of those weapons on Overwatch. So you know, use your if something small is coming at you, you can use a, the the smart missile systems and let's say the cluster rockets for your intercept, and the next turn you can fire your pulse weapon and a missile. So Interceptor really makes this thing a lot better. I mean, a lot better. So I don't know how those upgrades are going to survive the new codex, but for now, they make this really, really good. But you have to spend those extra points on the upgrades for this to really be good. You have to upgrade the gun. Yeah, and you have to give those three um, support systems. So that's where we're at with the Storm Surge. You know, I'd really like to get one. I can't afford one, unfortunately. But... Um, it is really, really a cool model. And they have some nice modeling tips in this White Dwarf too. It's about how to um, do it in sub-assemblies. And they also give instructions on, just like the Riptide, it has pins on it for its arms and legs. I wonder if we can find it. Yeah, so you can cut the pins off the joints, just like on the Riptide, and then make it standing up or pose the legs some other way. So, and there's a lot of people complaining about the model, about the open cockpit with the two dudes inside. I think it's freaking awesome. 
I've always wanted interiors in crisis suits and other suits, and I think having the open cockpit like that is awesome, but that's my opinion. I think it looks great. So anyway, so that's going to be the first episode of Taurific Tautober. And next episode will be next week. I will pick up next week's White Dwarf and go over the KV-95 Ghost Kill when that um, comes out, the official rules. And until then, I'll talk to you later.